she said she was gonna log in. Let me just go over again. She should be here right now. Okay. Because we can always record her on ours and then she can copy it there. Your call or her call. And guys, give us feedback on what you want to learn more about because we're going to be doing a series of many more events for you guys. So yeah, so let us know what you want to learn and we'll put something together for you. Hello, how are you? All right, so we'll be starting shortly. Just making sure yeah. that we have good everything set. Sorry, all good news, um, just connect it to ours and then Katie will straight away share it on the study news of Wales page. And then we're ready to get started. Okay, I can see we're live, yay, cool. Okay guys, so welcome, welcome, welcome to today's presentation. I will be sharing my screen and like I mentioned, just send me an email if you want a copy of the slides. We are also recording, so if you want a copy of the recording, also you can send us an email and we can send you the full file. Um, I will be probably talking for about 15 minutes and then at the end I'll take questions, but if you've got any questions while I'm talking, just turn on your camera, turn on your microphone and just shout it out and then I will help you guys. So I will show you here. You guys can see the screen? Yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, cool, awesome. So today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about how can you get your dream job through LinkedIn or how can you grow your business? Because LinkedIn will connect you to absolutely everybody that is doing business around the world. So first of all, thank you Study New South Wales for inviting us to do this presentation. This is the third presentation that we've done in the series of the summer program. We've got one more on social entrepreneurship coming up in two weeks but we will be doing many more presentations. So just send us an email or an Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn message with ideas or topics that you would like to learn about and we will put them together for you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And before we get started, let's connect. So today we're gonna to be learning about LinkedIn, which is one of the most powerful tools that helps us connect with everybody else. So the first big step for us is for all of us to connect. So my name is here on the side on um, the backdrop, um, but you also got here on the screen. So add me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and the Academy of Entrepreneurs, and then I'll give you guys a minute and then we get started. Because as you add each other, it changes the algorithm of the platform. And for example, I, a couple of years ago, I had the third most viewed LinkedIn profile of Australia, which means that if you connected with me, you would automatically almost connect with everybody in Australia. And then when you're adding each other and when you're adding someone that knows that you are connected to many more people that are connected within your network, they will trust you more and LinkedIn will build the algorithm in a way that will guide you to connect with more like-minded people that have the same interests as you. So let's go out there, connect each other. And if you want on the chat box, just share your LinkedIn as well. And then while I'm presenting, everybody can add everybody. So yeah. Cool. So um, the hashtag of today is boss your future because you're the owner of your future. You can achieve absolutely anything you want, but you need to take action. You need to decide and position yourself as a boss and take action and steps forward and you will be able to achieve it all. So while I am presenting today, if you guys want to take a photo, share, tag Academy Spinners or me through Instagram, LinkedIn or uh, Facebook, I will help you guys. One second, I just got a dog barking at him just to get her out. Bye, Bobby. <laughs> Okay, so um, we are on Zoom. I think absolutely everybody's familiar with Zoom, but if you haven't been on a Zoom webinar before, um, you can turn on your camera at the bottom, turn it on and off, and same with your microphone. And like I mentioned, this is an open workshop for you guys. I feel this after, I think I've been using LinkedIn for like, ooh, I don't know, like 14 years or something. So I've built it based on experience and also the success and also probably the mistakes that I've made over the years and I've seen what worked best and I've summarized it all into today's presentation. And then here in the chat box is where you can pop your questions, but you can also put your LinkedIn so we can all connect with each other and do some cool stuff together. So today, before I start talking about LinkedIn, I'm going to be talking about public relations because you need to know who you are, how do you want to be seen by the world so you can build the right connections. Then I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to write your bio, which is applicable for Instagram, for your TikTok, for your um, Twitter and your LinkedIn, obviously. Then I'm gonna super focus on LinkedIn. And then at the end, I will be taking questions. Cool, you guys ready? 
Yeah, cool. I can see some pretty smiles. Um, so yes, so before we start, we're going to talk about public relations and personal branding. So public relations is an art. There's no, it's like if you've got a painting, if you've got, if you've composed a song in the piano, there's no such thing as this is perfect, but you will always do your best and your idea is to connect with people and create that story, that connection, that wellness that people will remember you. And it is the art of communicating and getting what you want ethically. Because if you know what you want to communicate, and if you can figure out how the listener's brain or the reader's brain works, you can use the right tone of voice, images, content, and context to create and build a meaningful connection that drives change. So your personal brand, so what you post on LinkedIn, what you post on Instagram, what you post on Facebook, is a promise to your clients or your boss. It is also a promise of quality, uh, consistency, competency, and reliability. So from today onwards, before you post anything across any social media platform, not just LinkedIn, just think of yourself as a brand. So no longer Vincent Smith, Joanna, Sophia, Anna, you are now a brand. And you want to think before you make every post, what do I want people to think of me? And what box do I want to get put into? How can I connect with them and drive change? Because every time we make a post, we want to drive a reaction out of the person, whether it is them opening our CV, our pitch deck, buying our products or services, connecting with us. So what message do you want to show out into the world? And why is public relations so important? And why am I talking about public relations before we get into LinkedIn, which is our core topic of today? Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world, he says, if I was down to my last dollar, I would spend it on public relations. Why do you think he said that? Because public relations is about raising your company or your personal authority, building relationships and business jobs is all about relationships with key people and managing your reputation. So these are the different steps that you need to consider every time you're connecting with someone, posting a blog, posting a photo, sharing something amazing that you've done on LinkedIn. The power of personal branding. So public relations is very different to advertisement. So a lot of people get it confused. When you're advertising, you're saying, I am good at this. When you are good at public relations, someone else is saying that you're good. So imagine if you've got 100 connections on LinkedIn saying, giving you a review and saying that you were really good to work with on the project manager role that you did for a tech startup in Sydney. What's going to happen? When people look at your resume or if they contact someone within your LinkedIn network and just say, how was I working with Johnny? And they say, oh, he was fantastic. What happens? Your resume goes from being on the list to being right at the top as a priority. So this is why you need to super look after your brand every single day. So my question to you is, who are you? Who are you? How do you want people when you're not in the room to describe you? What skills do you have? What energy do you leave in the room? What results do you deliver on every project? So who are you? And once you understand who you are and how you want the world to see you, then you start building strategic messages on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, because the reality is that we kind of need to have a, like, a presence in all of these like, social media channels. And who do you want to be known as? Do you want to be the next Obama, Oprah? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the Prime Minister of Australia? And you have the power of achieving anything that you want, but you need to make a decision on who you are, and how do you want the world to know you? So there are lots of personality tests that help us get to know ourselves better because unfortunately, society has taught us to focus on being better at the things we're bad at, right? If we went to school and we failed maths, the teachers would call our parents and put us in special maths class. But if we were amazing at sports or in history class, no one ever said, oh my God, you're amazing at that. They will always focus on our weakness. But for you to become a true leader, you need to focus on understanding who you are and getting better at the things you're good at. So there are several personality tests that will help you decide who you are, what type of leader, what's your tone of voice. So if you haven't done many personality tests, just connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram, and I'll send you a list of some amazing personality tests that will help you mold yourself and your brand presence as you're posting throughout social media. 
An example, everybody says the little black dress. If you don't want to get in trouble, if you want to get respected, just wear the little black dress, you can never go wrong. But there's different types of black dresses, as we can see between the Kardashian, Penelope Cruz, and I think this is Lady Gaga, I don't even know who it is. It's one of those crazy celebrities. And you need to know that your tone of voice, everything you write, the color of your banner on your LinkedIn will show a different message. At the end of the day, these are all three women that are very famous in the media wearing a black dress. But can you see how they're showing a completely different message? Again, with brands, if you're working for a brand, you become the president of a brand or even the founder and an entrepreneur in the future. What brand do you want to be? Do you want to be the fun and cheap brand that attracts the mass? Do you want to be serious and reliable? Or do you want to be adventurous, different, and cool? And that's what these three incredible leaders have done. He is the CEO of Jetstar, he's the CEO of Qantas, and he is the CEO of Virgin. Completely different airlines that promote different values, different prices, different campaigns for different audiences. But at the end of the day, all of them get us from A to B, right? So the reality is that when you send a resume, when you connect with someone on LinkedIn, the person that's advertising, they just need the job done. But they need the job done in a way that your brand, your personality is aligned to the values. And I think this is where most people get wrong. They're just so desperate to make money that they didn't apply for any job. And this is why they're not able to stand out. Now, when you apply for your dream job in a company that is super aligned with your mission, vision, and value, that you will give every cell in your body to make this project successful, when you're getting interviewed, when you're connecting with them on LinkedIn, people can see that. And I, I speak from experience. I get a lot of people coming to me saying, I want a job. And when they look like everybody else, I literally delete their resume or I don't even remember what they look like. Lucas, that just um, set up for us the opening today. I met him at a presentation that I was doing. Oh, Lucas is here. I met him at a presentation that I was doing at Google and he just went, I absolutely, he had just flown into Australia and said, I absolutely love what a camp spinners does and I want to be a part of this. And I just went, who are you? And he just went, I don't care what you're doing. I'm getting a job here. And I just went, cool, just come to the office. He had attitude. He was cool. He was aligned to our brand. Then he was networking with our team for a few weeks. I flew back to Australia and the team absolutely loved him. He had done a lot of little projects that had given results. So what happened? We created a position that didn't exist for him because he was so aligned to our values. So you can't apply for a job, you need to create it. So the way you position yourself through LinkedIn gets you like not steps ahead, miles ahead. So let's continue. Thing that you need to take in consideration, so it's not just about you building your brand, it's also maintaining their brand. Warren Buffett's one of the most famous, if not one of the best investors of our time. He says, it takes 20 years for you to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you will do things differently. So every time before you post, don't think twice, think three times. And it's not just about the posts, it's how you react in society. If you do something that disrespects your family, the business you're working in, your personal brand, it can destroy your career forever. Because these days, we get tagged on photos all the time. See you soon. Bye. Thanks. This is a perfect example. He was considered an incredible president. And then he got caught cheating on his wife. And he lost, people lost the trust for Bill Clinton as a president because he made a wrong step on his personal life. And this was a lot before social media was a big thing. Imagine these days that we go to places and we get tagged, photographed, videoed in situations that we're not even aware that we're in. Look at Britney Spears, another one. She was like the queen of pop. And she started making one wrong image mistake after another. And she lost the trust of her fans. And now, like, if she was to release a new single, the chance of it becoming, like, a Billboard Top 100 is very little because we don't think she's cool anymore. We don't want to be associated to her. And it's the same when it comes to your brand. You want your boss to be proud of you the same way that you're proud of working in this business. So don't apply for any job. Apply for your dream job that is aligned to your values and the skills that you have and you are developing and you can add a value. So think twice before you apply for a job. So how do you want the world to know you? 
what is your expertise? Be honest with yourself. Don't be humble and shy. Don't be scared, but don't be arrogant. What is it that you're good at doing? Are you good with people? Are you good at coding? Are you good at accounting? Are you good at gardening? It doesn't matter. What are your areas of expertise? What is your tone of voice? We are all leaders. We are all born leaders, but we're all different. Could be 300 of us in a room right now, and we will have some things that are similar, but there's many other things that are very different. So you need to choose your tone of voice. When you contact them, do you want to go, dear Paula Mills, and at the end, regards John, or you're going to go, hey, Paula, how are you going, mate? Is that too casual or not? How do you find the right balance when you are connecting with someone on LinkedIn? Very important to connect. Because if you go too serious for a startup, we delete the message. But if you also have swear words and you're too down to earth, depending on the business, say you're applying for a job in a non-for-profit, they will also delete that. So consider, you could be working with a religious group and not belong to that religion, but look at how you can communicate with respect in a way that the other person goes, okay, this person has taken the time to go through our website or social media, they understand what we do and are respecting us through the tone of voice of the message. So a brand is not just a symbol or a logo, a name but a combination of different communications and experiences. So there's no point of your LinkedIn looking very professional and your Facebook looking really unprofessional. What a person perceives in every contact with your organization will start connecting dots in the brain and then they'll automatically put you in a box. So be very careful. I've seen a lot of people coming to me and say, oh, but it's my personal life. They shouldn't be checking my Instagram. I'm like, excuse me? That is the first thing I check before I go into any meeting to interview anyone. How do they look across all of the social media platform? If they are disrespectful towards the environment, towards the community, I can't have them working in our organization because they will ruin our brand. Like Warren Buffett said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to destroy it. And the thing is that you don't own your brand. So you kind of need to be guessing all the time. And for those of us that are in New South Wales and Australia, we're one of the most multicultural states in the world. So we need to also consider if I'm speaking to someone from Bangladesh, India, Nepal, even though they're all very close to each other in the map, it's different countries, different social classes, different religions, different locations around the world will expect different things the same way different industry does. So you need to see who you are as a brand, how do you want to be seen and try to think and think, think of how are they going to see you? So it, that it resides in the minds of other people who interact with your company or your brand on social media, your customers, your employees, your competitors, and even your advisors. As people are overwhelmed with information, you go into TikTok, you get lost in there for hours, right? You just scroll and scroll Instagram, through Instagram stories, LinkedIn, Facebook, emails, text message. Now, um, social, what is a social club, social house, I don't even know the thing, the app that doesn't stop ringing at the moment. And like, we get bombarded. So we need to know how can you stand out from the noise? And the more you repeat the message of your brand consistently, more and more people will remember you. So it's very important for you to be very clear when you are communicating. So you, as a brand, you're looking after four things. The company you're working in, whether you own it or not, yourself, your community, and also your concept. And today, we're going to be super focusing on yourself, but all of these are interacting with each other every single day. So first step is for you to look at your bio. So on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, you will have your bio here on top. And you get very few words to stand out. So you need to put effective words and an effective image that clearly summarizes who you are without you having too much time to express it. It's kind of what we call in the entrepreneurial world, the elevator pitch. When you get two sentences, 30 seconds maximum to connect and get someone's attention or they're gone. So you LinkedIn, you need to do the same. So who are you? You're a writer, director, producer. You're an entrepreneur and founder of these businesses. You've won awards. What is it that you want to be seen in? So look at that on your LinkedIn. So before you start building your LinkedIn, look at those keywords you want to put on top. Why is LinkedIn so important? There's over 575 million users. 96% of recruiters in the world use it. Most business professionals use it. 
So you might never know you're reading an article, you text someone that a friend of a friend sees and then tells you about a job that they're advertising in the company. Your LinkedIn profile can promote you far better than any resume because LinkedIn, we don't know how they've done it so well. LinkedIn has search engine optimized. So if you Google Paula Mills Academy of Entrepreneurs, the first thing you will see is LinkedIn, not our website, not my TikTok, not my Instagram, not my Facebook. So that means you're getting seen, you're getting put in, you're, there's more eyes going in front of you. I don't know how LinkedIn has done that, but that means that LinkedIn is a lot more powerful than any resume out of, in the world. And it is where business gets done and it's the best place for you to promote yourself in a professional matter. What are people looking at when they look at your LinkedIn? They wanna know, who do you know? So the more connections you have, and it doesn't matter if you're a student that's just arrived in Australia, add absolutely everybody from the industry. They want to know your skills, the skills that you've identified, but also the skills that people are referring at the bottom of the page. And they want to know, who are you as a brand? How do you present yourself? It doesn't matter if this is your first job, but maybe you volunteered at your high school, you were school captain, you're the head of the soccer team, you volunteer for, I don't know, planting trees or at your local church, it doesn't matter because all of these things will drive, will give you leadership skills that when we are screening through resumes are making us pay attention or just delete and go to the next person. So please consider these three things that people are looking at your LinkedIn. Who are you? What, how do you present yourself? What skills do you have? And who do you know? Whenever anyone adds me, before I look at like anything, I just go, how many connections do I have in common? And if someone has more than 500 connections with me in common, I will take my time to reply to the message. Now, if someone's just cold calling me, sending me a silly message, asking for a job where I don't even know what the skills are, going, Paula, do you have a job for me? I just go delete and I don't even add the person. But if I know that the person has 100 pe people in common with me, I'm just going, hmm, let me read the profile. And then I look at the bio, I look at the quality of the photo. What is it stated on the banner? Have they written a blog? And then we start searching and finding more about the person. And the reality is that the game has changed. The job finding game has changed so much. So up until the year of 2000, grob, jobs grew 1.7 times faster than the population. So that means that if you applied for a job before 2000, you had more jobs than people. But since the year of 2000, the population has been growing 2.4 times faster than the jobs. And the reason is because a lot of these jobs are getting automated thanks to technology that helps us cut down cost, automate, and speed up the process. But that means that it's harder and harder for you to get a job. So you, again, you no longer apply for a job. You have to create your job. And the reality is that when anyone receives a resume and they're interested in speaking to the person, we will spy on you. And we will scroll through your Instagram, see your connections, and go through all of the different platforms. And we will also Google your name to see in the back end how are these images being shown. Investors are looking for you there as well. If you are looking, going down the path of you becoming an entrepreneur, investors, mentors, coaches, the reality is that everybody is watching you. You have no idea. Like sometimes I'm walking through airports or in the city and people go, Paula, I read that article. And I'm like, but you never commented on my article and you never posted a like and you never shared my article. People are watching you so much more than you can think. Like I literally get stopped every single day by people that I've never seen in my life. And they just go, I saw your Instagram. I saw your LinkedIn article. I saw this that you posted on Facebook. I saw this live that you've done from the government. Everybody's watching us. So you need to be triple careful. So what do you do? First step is your photo. This is not Facebook. So use a professional photo. If you can't afford a photo shoot, get your iPhone, put it on portrait mode, and it just clears the line and chuck it on any like photography auditing um, app and just edit. You can edit it for free to make it as professional as possible. Put on a selfie stick or hold it Hold it in a way that it's not selfie stick, sorry, in a selfie holder. Put it in a way that it's straight into the camera. Don't use selfies at an angle, so it needs to be straight. Don't try to be cute and funny. This is a professional environment. Make it relatable to your industry. And I'll show you guys a couple of examples. Make sure it's clear and bright. No blurry photos cropped on the side. Look into the camera and smile. I recently changed my photo. I'm not looking into the camera and there's a strategic reason that I'll tell you guys about it in a second. These are examples of bad photos. Cropped, this guy is holding two beers. This one has stretched his face to fit into the photo. 
And this one, look at how bad. I don't care if you're an artist. Get a good photo of you playing music. You can't even see the person. Also consider how this photo looks in a circle. Because Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, they're all placing us in, in a circle. If you have the new Google phone, it already takes the photos in a circle for you because they know that that is a big trend. But most of us have an iPhone or an Android and that doesn't take in a photo, photo in a circle. So when you are taking a photo, give a little bit of space because it will zoom in and then you will lose the corner. So to make sure that your face fits in. Can you see? These are all very bad because it's cutting the logo out. It's cutting this guy holding the camera and it's cutting half of her face as well. So this is an example of a good photo. So if he was an architect and he's perfectly positioned buildings, he's smiling, looking approachable. You want to start a conversation with him, right? So when you take a photo, this is the first thing people are seeing. So take some time and look at your LinkedIn photo and then we'll go on to the next one. Then next thing is for you to look at your profile. Do you want to put your job title and the company you're working or do you want to put your areas of expertise? Lucas is one on, Inst on LinkedIn. He's got his areas of expertise and passion. And then when you read through it, you will see that he's part of the Academy of Entrepreneurs team. But before he's driving attention to his areas of expertise, because that is a way that he can get more people to connect with him so that he can have better connections to help the students at Academy of Entrepreneurs succeed and also him and his career succeed. So it's very important for you to consider what you want to put in these three sentences. So don't leave anything blank. And the good thing with LinkedIn is that as you're writing it, it's giving you a recommendation on what you need to put in it and what's missing. Talk about yourself. Include media at the bottom. This is your chance to sell yourself. And add your personality. Remember, we are a brand as an individual at the end of the day. So add your personality. Then you need to look at your banner. If you're going to work in the space of sustainability, Put a photo from sustainability world. If you're going to work with data and analytics and technology, put a cool banner. And in my one, I've put boss your future, which is the hashtag of a camp nurse, because I truly care about people bossing the future, make, taking action, making the world a better place. I don't like people that talk. I like people that do. And I think that when we take action, we progress, we become successful, we become happier, we can add impact in the world. So this is what I believe. So I put that in the banner. This is my old LinkedIn photo that was taken by a professional photographer. My current one is me holding a microphone because these days I do more public speaking than anything else. Therefore, I've on purpose put a photo of me on stage holding a microphone. So when people contact me, they know that that's my area of expertise. And I'll tell you guys something. Since I've done that, two large organizations, including the United Nations, have reconnected with me just going, oh, you're doing more presentations? Can you come in and do some presentations for us? So it's effective. Can you see I've positioned myself as a brand, as a public speaker in the space of entrepreneurship and leadership and skills development? And it's working. So you need to see how do you want to be seen. So then you're going to have to talk about the experience. So we do the photo. We've got the banner. We've got those three little words. And then underneath it, we're going to be talking about your experience. List your achievements. If you're the market, digital marketing manager of whatever company, you don't need to talk about what a digital marketing does. It's obvious that you're going to be doing building campaigns and strategies and looking at data. Like that's just common sense. But list your top three achievements. What are the last three things that are incredible that you've achieved? And put as many like numbers as possible. So don't list your responsibility. Don't copy paste your job description. Even if you're volunteering in the local church and then you triple the number of youth um, and young um, people that have joined the community or you were volunteering for, I don't know, the council and then you double the numbers of participants for the sphere. List there in numbers, describe what the company does and give context and how that will link to your, pre, to your next job. Describe what makes you different in the business and put as many metrics as you can. So here, responsibility, dot points, and all with numbers. Manage the entire marketing team, generated interest in the program, ranking from 20 to 1,300 people. So put numbers into it. And... At the bottom, what I love doing is literally putting the title achievement and put it here. Ranked number one recruiter, redesign and improve the entire future training of a company and motivate a weaker sales staff to perform. I think you can even go deeper into numbers, like grew the business to sale by 23%, increase the revenue by this, engagement, put it in there. So put it in dot points because people are time for it and put as many numbers as possible. And I personally think the shorter the sentence, the better it is. 
then it's time for you to start building your network. Invite as many people as you can. And that's the beauty of LinkedIn. Because if you've got on your banner that you love sustainability, anyone that's written a blog, a book, a TED talk on sustainability, they will add you back because it's clear that you're interested about the same topic. Join as many LinkedIn groups as possible. Share articles and tag others so you can start building the algorithm. So if you want to build your career, let's say in artificial intelligence, post one article about artificial intelligence every day and start tagging some leaders in the industry or some friends or your boss. And because then they will reshare, say, great article, you quote maybe a paragraph that was really interesting and then you tag the name and then that drives attention and it starts changing your algorithm and connect it to more like-minded people because the back of LinkedIn will do that for you. Look at your context connections. So if there's someone that you super admire, say, I don't know, he's like the president of an artificial intelligence business that you think is really cool. Go in there, see who are they following and follow everybody back. Because then again, it pushes you into that algorithm and be active. LinkedIn promotes those that contribute to it. So if you go into LinkedIn, my recommendation is minimum five minutes a day into LinkedIn. And the thing is that when you scroll through Instagram and TikTok, when you get out of those platforms, you know you've wasted time. But when you scroll through LinkedIn, you never feel bad. Like you never feel guilty because you always connect with more people. You read something interesting. You get access to data. There's blogs or you end up connecting with really cool people that will open extra doors for you. Cool. So I'm not going to get you guys to do the activities now because we only have 30 more minutes and I want to take questions at the end, but I can send this all three to you guys. My next recommendation is make a list of 15 blogs. Okay. So say, let's use the example of artificial intelligence. You want to position yourself as a leader in the artificial intelligence space. You're in semester one at Sydney University learning about IT. How are you going to do it? What are the key companies? Start following them. What are the key groups for technology, IT, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, machine learning? Go in and put yourself into all of them. Comment, like, follow things. And make a list of 15 blogs today and share three minimum a week that are linked to the area you want to position yourself as a leader. You don't need to be writing the blogs right now. You can just be sharing and you're curating content. And I do a lot of that. I curate a lot of content because I'm I've got a few databases that send me amazing articles in the startup world. So I just share. When I read something really interesting, I keep them saved in a file on Slack. And then me and my assistant, we stop every three days and we make a list and we go like, okay, what's the strategy? Which one are we going to share in what day? And then we highlight the quotes, a sentence, a paragraph, or the part that is important. We tag a couple of people and we share, and that just builds the algorithm. So I will get thousands of people opening my LinkedIn on a daily basis because I am sharing valuable content. And a lot of people come to me and go like, Paula, I love the content that you're sharing. Thanks for writing. And I'm like, I'm not writing anything. I'm just sharing someone else's content of useful information linked to my target audience because my LinkedIn is very focused on international students and entrepreneurs. So I always share things linked to these two audiences. And add yourself in as many groups as possible. If you're passionate about marketing, Masters of Marketing from Sydney University, Sydney Marketing Professionals, add yourself in every single group. It doesn't cost anything to add yourself into those groups. And you can see what people are talking about, job positions, what articles, latest trends, white papers, and so forth. So very, very, very important. Make a list of 50 groups and spend minimum five minutes a day networking with them because you will start seeing, and I, I've had like a lot of people that started commenting on different groups that I manage. And then I walk through the streets, they stop me, we start a conversation before we know we're having a coffee and we're working on a project together. So LinkedIn gives you that power of connecting. I have connected with so many award-winning authors and they will connect with you back, especially if you write a personalized message talking about how that book or TED talk changed your life. Be specific. Same as when we spoke about the achievements putting number. Be specific. When you contact them, just go, oh my God, Simon Sinek, your book starts with why changed my life. Since then, I started these three businesses. I referred it to a hundred friends. They've all started business. Amazing connecting with you. Keep up the good work. And you'll go like, thanks, dudes. You will get a reply because people are reading. LinkedIn is probably the only platform that our assistants don't manage for us. My Instagram, my email, even my WhatsApp, I have, depending on the day, I have part of our team helping me reply because I get too many messages. But my LinkedIn is my LinkedIn. No one touches my LinkedIn. So it's an opportunity for you to connect with. I've even had some of the biggest ministers here in Australia connecting with me and writing back to me. 
because they're reading the message and they're interested, especially if they see that you've got a lot of connections, you're writing a lot of blogs, you're sharing a lot of good content, they will reply back to you because they know that there's a huge chance you will become the next biggest leader of Australia. So they want to talk to you. And it doesn't matter if you're in the first semester of university, it doesn't matter if you're still studying English in Australia, you have the power of connecting with everybody. And you need to know how to stand out. So how do you stand out? You need to get minimum three references. So any three people that you've engaged with, whether it's paid volunteering, volunteering or worked with, LinkedIn is very keyword orientated. So make sure that you use the same keywords as you're describing yourself and as you're also encouraging people to write. So you can write everybody that does an internship at Account Spinners. I always tell them, what do you want me to write on your reference on your LinkedIn? What do you want me to write? What is the next position you're going for? And then I use the keywords to help them. And add a video in your profile from the business you're working or a video of yourself in action working in the company. Um, ask for as many recommendations as possible. If you don't have three, it kind of looks dodgy unless you're an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, you don't need the references because they're not really needed. But if you are looking for a job, you do definitely need a reference and ask for minimum, um, like you need to have minimum three, but ask for 10 today. Contact with people, your teacher at university, someone within your community, someone that you've offered a product or a service, someone that you volunteered. Things that are very important for you to focus on. Think before you post, send or tag someone on a blog. Treat others like you want to be treated. The same way that you want to walk into a room and you want people looking you straight into the eye, using the right tone of voice, connecting with you and saying something that is useful because you don't like anyone wasting your time. So don't do that to anyone else. Keep an eye on photos that you have been tagged. LinkedIn doesn't have so much of this whole tagging thing on photos, but keep an eye on what you've been tagged on Facebook and Instagram because we check that. When I go into people's Instagram, I don't check just what they've been posting. I check on the activity that they've been tagged on the third little box on LinkedIn, on Instagram, sorry. Remember that the online information is there forever. So if you did something, if you misbehaved in a, I don't know, company party, that photo could stay there forever. And also remember to Google yourself. So take a few minutes, maybe once a month, and just write your full name, the company you're working in or the company that you've set up, and Google yourself to see what is Google talking about to. And be careful with your image, because like we discussed, it takes 20 years for you to build a reputation and five minutes to destroy it. And final tips. Um, let me just pull this thing out of the way. Do, 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 do watch and connect with absolutely everybody in the industry so again connect with your true life purpose and just go okay i'm studying tech i'm studying to become a chef do i want to work in a cafe fine dining three had a restaurant and watch that space who's in the space and connect with absolutely everybody but don't just connect send a personalized message because they will automatically add you back spy on your target so say you have, let's say Google, you send your resume and after a hundred tries, uh, finally you get called for an interview at Google. Go and honestly become obsessed with everybody that's gonna be interviewing you. Look at who their bosses are, who's the director of human resources at Google, the person that's gonna be interviewing the colleagues, everybody, and start spying and start seeing what are they talking about? What are they posting? Who are they following? What are they doing? Because if you come to the interview prepared, they're gonna value a lot more. And another example goes, if you're still doing resume by hand on a combination to LinkedIn, don't walk into places. I hate when I see students walking in with like 20 printed resumes, they're dirty, the corners have gone soft, they're walking with a backpack looking like a little poor student that needs a job. Do you think they're gonna get a job? Obviously not. Now, if you walked in well-dressed, but not super dressed to scare people off, but if you walk in well-dressed and just go, your food or your business, your company, completely inspires me because of X, Y, Z. I absolutely love reading that article that you spoke about, that you wrote about, and I saw you on this TED presentation. Can you see how it changes the whole environment? So go in prepared for the interview. So it's not enough just getting your LinkedIn to be amazing and get a connection and let them call you in for an interview. Spy on them for many days before you meet with them face to face. Personalize the message as much as you can. So say someone from Google goes, dear Johnny Smith, um, we would like to invite you for the first round of interviews. That same person automatically go and Google and send them a personalized message through LinkedIn. After the interview, thank them for their time. 
because they could have interviewed anyone else. Make sure that you're memorable. Then reconnect with them. So find any excuse because you've been spying on them for a few days. Find any excuse to reconnect with them without talking about the job. So if, again, they love technology, get a white paper, a really incredible TED talk, just anything that is incredible has just come out of the market, maybe a podcast, and find a way to send them a message. Just go, hey, great meeting with you two days ago. I came across this podcast and absolutely loved it because of X, Y, Z. Thought you'd like it as well, so I'd like to share it with you. What's going to happen? When they go back to look at everybody that they had interviewed on that day, you're going to be remembered. But don't talk about the position. Talk about just your passion for the industry, that you're going above and beyond, you're self-educating yourself, your industry connected, and you've got the latest insights. Then a few days later, it's absolutely fine for you to follow up if you haven't heard and show that you really, really, really want the position. Because if we know that you really want the position, you love the values of our company, you're connecting with us and sending us further content that can support our business, even if you don't take all of the boxes for the role, you're automatically going to be a lot more considered than everybody else. Because when we hire, we don't hire based on your skill. We hire based on attitudes, on your values. Because someone with the right attitude and values, they will always find a way of finding solutions and upskilling themselves according to the growth of the company. But if we're hiring someone just on skills and they have no social skills or they're not ethical or they don't care about our business, if they just see this as a job that pays the bill, these days with the current situation, the competitiveness of the market where you're not competing just with people in Sydney that want the job, you're competing with the whole world because everybody's working online. You need to really be able to go above and beyond and shine out there in the world. And I'm going to share with you guys a little case study. I can't share the person's name, um, but I had once someone who was working for the competitors and he contacted me on LinkedIn, email, Instagram, and Facebook with the same message across a four hour period. First time I saw him on LinkedIn, I just went, you belong to a competitor, you're probably spying, you're saying that you want a job, but you probably just wanna get our information and give it back to this competitor. And it was a competitor that was like very strategic to one of the products that we had. So I needed to keep them very far away from us because we were building all of the stuff and we were registering with intellectual property. So we needed to be careful. So initially when I saw that, I just went back off. But then when I saw that the person message me on three other medias, I just went, hmm, he's really serious about this, right? He didn't just send his resume. He connected four times in a period of four hours. So it's not like he just copy pasted straight away. Da -da 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 -da. He waited to see, because you can see when someone opened your message on Instagram. You can see when someone opened on, on Gmail. You can see when someone opened it on LinkedIn. So he kept on tracking. He knew that I was opening, but not replying to him. On the fourth time, I just went, who is this person? I need to now out of respect because they've taken so much time to absolutely bombard me and spy on me. Now it's my time to see what is this person doing? And I said, thank you for your interest, but we have no position in what you're asking for. I will get back to you when we have a position or the best. He was very smart. He knows how the world works. He was very mature in the space. He had been in the space for maybe 25 years at a global level. So he just went, Paula, it's fine if you don't have a position. I absolutely love what you're creating. I can see you're going to become the market leader. And I would like to have the opportunity to have a coffee. Coffee's on me. Tell me where you are. Give me 15 minutes of your time and I will be there. And he was so strategic, so effective. He was just asking for 15 minutes of my time. And I just went, fine. This day, this time I'm available. Meet me at the coffee on this corner. And we caught up and he had a really cool energy. And it stayed in my mind. But again, I was just like, you have worked for the competitor until now. You're telling me that you don't work for them, but how do I know that you're not going to go back there? How do I know you're not spying? Didn't pay attention. Came Christmas. He sent me a beautiful personalized message. Came New Year's Eve, another message, and just went, how's business going? I've been seeing you guys growing more and more at Academy Entrepreneurs. I would like to be part of the team. Can we catch up for another coffee? And I just went, okay. So you haven't been in the company for a while. You still remembered. You sent me several messages. You've been watching us grow. You're celebrating our success. I will have a coffee with you. Sat up with him for coffee, spoke about our long-term vision. He explained about his long-term vision. We gave him a position on the, on the spot. And that same day, he started working for us. Guys, he was three times more than what I could afford at the time. 
three times more. But he was so strategic that I just went, he has done so much research about my personal life and the company that I'm building, about our team, about our growth, about our impact, and was so aligned to his values, vision, mission, that I just went, let's just take the risk. And let me tell you, it wasn't a risk. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. So because he took his time, his LinkedIn looked professional, he followed up through a gentle way, but used different platforms and he looked credible and professional across all of them. He was given this amazing opportunity. So I encourage you to do the same. Like I mentioned, Lucas joined our team because he literally begged us for it, but he didn't beg in a way, I need the money. He just went, I love the brand. I will help you grow. These are my strengths. What you've built is exactly what I want to dedicate my life towards. So we offered him a position and you can get the same. So don't apply for a job created. Use LinkedIn to create your brand, get the credibility, build your community and you stop molding. And honestly, everything that I'm sharing with you guys, if you do it in the next 24 hours, I can guarantee you, you will get results. I can guarantee you. If you add 100 people in the next day, and you tell me that 50 of them haven't added you, if you have a good banner, if you're sharing blogs, using the right bio, a good photo, honestly, like it's literally impossible. So I will now take questions from you guys. Um, this is our phone number and our email. Please connect us if you haven't connected with us. Let me actually open my LinkedIn. Let me see how many of you guys added me on LinkedIn. Another cool thing that you guys can do when you go to um, physical events, turn your LinkedIn Bluetooth on and you can connect with everybody. Cool, I can see a lot of you guys here. Ah, oh, and you guys personalize it, yay! I am so proud of you guys, awesome. Okay, amazing guys. Let me see on my Instagram as well, how many of you guys have connected? Because you remember you need to connect across all of these different platforms. Amazing. Oh my God. Cool. You guys are amazing. Who is talking on top of us? Cool. So I will stop sharing the screen. Um, like I mentioned, just send me, I'm going to post here um, my email. So if you want a copy, so it's Paula, my name, dot mills at aestudy.com. So if you want a copy of the slides, you can get it. We've just live streamed this on the Academy Spinners Facebook page, and it's also yeah. getting copied over the Study New South Wales um, Facebook page. So you guys can rewatch it there as well. Cool. So now we have 12 minutes together. Guys, what questions do you have? Siv, how are you? Hello, Siv. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you again. Who has a question? Let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, you guys have put your, your, oh my God, there's so many messages. Amazing, okay. Um, Roxana saying you can access all of the recordings, yes. Um, can you share people requesting it? Um, yes, you can. Send me an email, LinkedIn, you can put your LinkedIn. I'm trying to On all of your LinkedIn's. It's for her. I tried it, I'm here. Sorry guys, like it's somebody else talking over us. So I think somebody's forgotten to mute. Um, here's questions, guys. Okay, so if you don't have questions, tell me, what was the most useful thing you learned today that you just go, oh, hadn't done that, I need to do that, and I can feel I'm going to get results? Yes, tell me. So I think the one thing that is very important is we are being watched every time, every second. So it's just about being polished in what you do and still maintaining yourself yeah. it's a silver line but yeah yes yes very 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 correct because we all have our leadership styles we all have our tone of voice we all have our areas of interest but it's very 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 important for us to keep it clear and consistent across all of them and i mentioned a little bit on tiktok you can be a little bit more funny instagram you show more your lifestyle linkedin you will be a lot more professional but you still need to show your values and your mission vision and goals around all of these platforms and keep it very aligned, even on a tone of voice and an email everywhere. Very good, thanks for sharing. Who else would like to share the most interesting thing that they learned today that they would like to apply? Hi Paula and everyone, Hi. I have a question for you. Uh, so I create content on Instagram, majorly on Instagram and I create content majorly on communication skills, public speaking and mindfulness, right? So I created some videos and I started uploading them, the same videos that I would upload on Instagram, on LinkedIn as well. But what I realized that I think, you know, like the demographics and the audience is really different on both of these platforms. So would you recommend me to create, you know, sep separate uh, content, maybe more of written format for LinkedIn and then have it um, just 
you know, purposely built for that platform. 100%. And um, your message at the end of the day will be the same. But imagine, so say you want to have like, I don't know, your favorite dish. If you're going to have it with your mom, your girlfriend, your grandmother, the way you would invite them for dinner will be different, right? So it's the mm -hmm. same thing when you are communicating. You're still inviting them for dinner. You still want to connect with them. And the reality is that, Shiv, you're building a beautiful, strong community because your Instagram is amazing. Thank you. you can still drive all of them through LinkedIn. But when you open LinkedIn, your brain is wired to have professional work. So if you upload a TikTok as a fun thing, one off once a year, that might create some sort of like a movement and organically will be funny. But the reality is that no one is going in there to see you doing the dun, 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 dun. They don't want to see that. Right. They want to read articles, podcasts, or a serious video of you sharing, like even the way you screen. So whenever I do like, for example, um, Instagram, I put our banner and I show the space I'm in. Mm -hmm. But whenever I'm going to do something for LinkedIn, I do it a lot more professional. I record it on Zoom with the backdrop. And as I get our media team to put some keywords across, it's completely different. So I think um, when you think of the difference between them, the content that you would normally put on YouTube is a lot more like, like appropriate for um, LinkedIn. So like on YouTube, you put a lot more energy towards when you're building a video, right? Right. And you go because you know it's going to disappear in 24 hours and you just delete but it's what Warren Buffett was saying, takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to destroy it. Mm -hmm. so if people are scrolling, if they see again and again and again that your stuff going on LinkedIn is too casual, they're going to scroll faster through your name and LinkedIn is going to pick up that people aren't engaging with your content. So you're no longer be, going to be shown. Have you seen that the content that you like always shows up first on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter? So it's the same. So you want to have your fan base following you. And if they scroll too fast, you're going to start disappearing off the algorithm. But if they start liking, commenting, and resharing, or in the case of Instagram, when you, you save it on the little arrow, all of that, and I'm sure that you check your algorithm, your analytics at the back end, all of that will be shown as well and will have a huge impact. So a lot of it is, I can't say trial and error because you can't just be like throwing anything out there, but a lot of it is analyzing the data. And that's the beauty hmm. of today. Like, all of these platforms are giving us instant data. Like you can go in Google Analytics, you can go on Instagram, you can go, you can pull that data straight away. You don't know what's going to go organic because if we knew how to go for something to go like go viral, organically growing, we don't know what's going to happen because things change, but we can track the number and we can see like, oh, if I start a presentation full of energy, if I've got a quieter tone of voice, if I've got an opening banner, if I've got music in the background and start tracking that, and a lot of that also, if you're using YouTube, YouTube, the um, reports in the back will even tell you how many people logged in at what times did they drop out, what's demographic, yeah. what part of the world they're in. So look at that data and understand if you've got a lot of, I don't know, international students following you, maybe build more content for them. Now, if your target audience is an international student, is young professionals graduating from a master's, then you're going to have to change your content to start building towards that. Right. Because on like the case I can explain, I can talk. So sometimes like I've got different audiences and then I can see that all of my audience wants this, but if I'm about to launch a big project with millions of dollars in the next few months, I will start molding my message to start attracting the new audience because the other audience I've already retained. I've already like kind of converted them to everything. I've got them in the community. They're already like subscribed to our other product. So for me to build a new database, it takes months for me to be building new content and attracting that. The easiest way to be successful is build a product around the audience they already hold. So you study at Sydney University, as I know. So if you've got a lot of UCID alumni following you, what is it they want to hear? And what could you sell to them to monetize? Talking about that, um, in two weeks, we've got a course teaching you guys how to make money by starting um, online courses. So how do you turn your talent and link it to your current database and make thousands of dollars a month overnight by just pre-recorded content because you understand what you're good at and what does your audience want to do that you're good at and you start selling. So this is, it's just about analytics. Like, and this is why data is becoming such a big like topic these days around the world. But awesome question. Very Thanks. good. Thanks. Oh, that was very helpful. And also I wanted to ask when you mentioned about uh, curating content. So you mentioned that you have, you know, like on Slack, you would have some blogs. So is that you curating content instead of creating it sometimes? So that's how you can manage both of them? I do both. Okay. I do both for multiple reasons. One is I don't have time to be writing blogs every single day because writing a good blog will take you one to five hours. 
And another thing is that I am obsessed with learning. I absolutely love learning. I want to know about everything and the trends and I want to be ahead of the market. And so if I'm reading blogs, that keeps me updated. And then once I've read about 100 blogs on that topic, it's easy for me to summarize and turn it into my own blog. So last year, I wrote a lot of blogs. I was almost writing one blog every two days. And I wrote on the importance of being an entrepreneur, on how crisis is the best time for you to start your business, how looking after your health and exercising will help your business perform better. But I was reading hundreds of articles on the topic. So when I decided to write it, I just went back to those blogs or I had so much knowledge already in my brain that I was just like, filtering and amending it to my personal story so have a combination of both because you also don't want to be the one that just shares about you 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 because then it kind of just goes mm, shiv is just about him you know you want to also be going like hey these are the top authors and podcasters and bloggers around the world and you can share and you can mix the two of them and tag them because often they will comment back on you especially if you've got a good algorithm if you like if you get like a thousand people resharing it the author of the book would definitely comment on it and thank you for it Cool. Thank you, Shiv. Thank cool. you. I'm looking forward to meeting you tomorrow. Pleasure. Looking forward to meeting you too tomorrow. Um, let's see. How do you sell yourself out of the workforce for a while? Um, Paola Balboa, don't worry that you've been out of the workforce. Tell the truth. If you've been out of the workforce because you were studying for a PhD, you were a mom, you were, I don't know, taking some time off, absolutely fine. But it's more, more than talking about the time off from work. It's what have you accomplished in the time? What books have you read? What courses have you done? Who have you networked? How have you connected more with your purpose? So don't worry. We all have to take breaks sometimes and we can change industries. I've had a lot of people going, I don't belong to the entrepreneurship world, but I've been in these industries and I have a passion for entrepreneurship for X, Y, Z. Please give me an opportunity. These are the courses that I'm doing. I actually gave a job to someone a week before Christmas. And normally you don't really offer jobs for people a week before Christmas, but he was so passionate about entrepreneurship and he was going so strong and he was actually able to drive his results between Christmas and New Year's Eve. Like I was like, I was so impressed because he was so passionate about developing this new network and skills and connections in the space that he was able to give us incredible. Stephen was amazing. Like he was such incredible results. Cool guys. Um, thanks for joining us today. So add me on LinkedIn. I'm going to put my LinkedIn here for you guys. So you guys, and I can see my LinkedIn already beeping. Um, I'm going to put my LinkedIn and my Instagram so we can stay in touch. To do -do -do. Mm -hmm. Instagram as well. And please let me know how you're going. If you have any challenges, struggles, or even little wins in the next few days or weeks or months, please share because I love learning all about your experiences to see what I should be talking more about and also what are the areas you guys want to learn. Like I mentioned, we will be doing many more workshops. Um, at Account Spinners, we do one workshop a week. Every Tuesday, we've got a free workshop. We did a beautiful one yesterday. Uh, we've got some many more amazing topics coming ahead. And then we will be doing a few more for the Australian government. We're doing a few for a few consulates as well. So the Brazilian consul, the Argentinian consul, the Chilean consul, Peruvian consul. So um, connect us to your consulates if you want us to do presentations. We speak multiple languages, but let us know what you want to learn about because we will build them for you guys. So thank you so much for joining. Boss your future. Have an amazing year. And whoever's in the city and wants to catch up with us, just send us a message and then we can catch up with you guys and give you guys more tips, connect and make the world a better place. See you guys soon. Thanks guys. And remember, this is all recorded. So if you want to copy of the slides, just send us a message. See you soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.